How you doing everyone? Welcome back to my channel, Heli Cools, Heli Pad. I'm Dave Anderson. I know how so many people just love watching me do work on vehicles, but uh, this is my bug. It's a 2001, and I'm gonna be doing brake maintenance on it. And this will be basic brake maintenance. So you need to properly block the wheels, put the emergency brake on, and all the other safety features that uh, are required to make this a safe project. But we're going to go ahead and get started because uh, as every vehicle is different, um, this one is, is uh, close to but still not the same as the uh, Buick that I worked on last month. So we'll get right into it. The Germans must really love their star wrenches. And <laughs> I've used these star wrenches with a, with a socket end and just about everything I've come across has a star wrench. So what I would recommend doing, now several of them have fallen off in my bag, but this is a kit that you can get, um, or a set rather, that you can get on uh, harborfreight.com. And I recommend getting this if you own a bug because, like I said, the Germans must really love their star wrenches because this thing is full of them. So anyway, to get the um, brakes, uh, it, it has a caliper, but it does not have a, a bracket that is removable. It's actually part of the car. So in order to remove that, uh, this looks like a... A T45 so a T45 on the back of uh, you have to remove a little cap and there's a rubber boot on it you remove the cap and then you can get to the to the star um, lug but the T45 takes those two lugs off and then it looks like I can get to the brakes after that all right so this is the cap that you have to remove you just remove that with a screwdriver and right here is the boot. See, it's just a rubber boot. And inside there is where the T45 goes. Right inside like that. And then you just take a driver and, of course, lefty-loosey, righty-tighty, and you pull it out. And there's two of them. There's, there's, there's one there, and there's one down on the other side, right here with my fingers. You can't see it take those two out and should be able to have access to the brake pads all right well once I got both of these out all the way you can see that I can just kind of oh, doesn't look like that one's out all there we go all right and you can actually tell you see this one actually has a wire built into it and that wire is to tell you when the brakes are low this one hasn't come on yet, but they're really pretty close. So I'm going to go ahead and replace that one. Um, now yours may not have a wire, just depends on which one it is. I, I actually bought both of them because I didn't know if mine had the wire or not. So now that I know, I'll go ahead and take the other one back. You can see that it was pretty close. It does have some wear left in it, but it was time it was getting really close and these things just push in to the to the caliper um one word of caution about the caliper don't don't let it don't let this thing drop and pull on this uh on this hose because that could break the hose or crack it open or whatnot so make sure that it's set up somewhere where it's not going to fall and here's the other side this actually fits right inside the caliper um, throat. So uh, pretty easy. This is a pretty nice design. So I'm gonna go ahead and unhook this brake pad just by unclipping it here. And we'll be able to change that out, no problem, and lickety split. All right, well, there's the old brake pad. Here's the new one. So it just clips right in there and then this slides into the caliper. 
Now the brake reservoir, I pulled this uh, back. It's all the way inside here. And so you have to monitor that when you're pushing the, the uh, fluid back up inside it. And if you, if you uh, add any, make sure that you check the manufacturer uh, to determine what brake fluid that it's going to be, what dot, if it needs a special um, brake fluid. Because it's a foreign vehicle, uh, I know that, uh, that the power steering takes um, foreign power steering fluid. And if you were to put US power steering fluid in there, it's going to mess up your your uh, rack and pinion and cause the seals to leak so make sure you don't make that mistake somebody had done that prior to me owning this vehicle and i had to replace that rack and pinion and once again i'm going to use my tried and true method of uh, putting a c-clamp on here and pushing the caliper back and of course i want to make sure to monitor Every once in a while, I'll take a look to see if I'm if I'm overflowing up top. All right, I've got it back far enough, so I'm just going to take this old brake pad and just get rid of it. And time to put the new brake pads in. You can tell there's a whole lot more meat on these brand new brake pads. Those other ones were down quite a way, so it's a good time to replace it. All right, everything is seated in there. Looks pretty good. thing I got left to do is plug this in okay not to pinch this wire that's for sure okay it's out of the way all right now I just have to get these screws back in just have to get these bolts back into their place and uh, probably spray these off with some brake cleaner and this pro and tighten these up of course and this project is done because I'm uh well, I might check the I might check the fluid just to kind of make sure. Well I feel like it's an eternity later, but I'm finally getting back to working on the bug again. Uh the reason why I didn't uh finish working on it is because I found that one of the uh caliper bolts, um the uh where it goes into actually hold the uh, into the bracket to hold the caliper on the uh, bracket was stripped and so I hummed and hawed about it and I thought about well maybe I could get a new bracket well for the 2001 Volkswagen new Beetle you have to replace that entire system and it's just a humongous pain and very expensive so second best thing to do is to get a helicoil set now, VW, in their infinite wisdom, decided to make a helicoil or make that uh, bolt size hole uh, kind of like an odd size because this one actually is a M9 by 1.25. And that is an odd size because I could get a whole kit for 32 bucks that'll do, what, six, seven different sizes? one size about 45 bucks um, and it doesn't even come with the drill bit so this is what you're gonna have to do you're gonna have to get one of these and uh, what these basically does does is it uh, measures the size of a drill bit and you have to find the type drill bit that 
these work with. Now this tells me inside here that it's a 23 64 drill bit. So <laughs> couldn't make it more difficult, couldn't add one to this package. Uh, there wasn't any that I could buy on the shelf unless I wanted to buy a whole kit of them. Well, fortunately I have a lot of drill bits. So I went to my drill bits, got this card out and I started measuring and there it is. 23 64 and I know that it's that size because if I try to stick it in the one smaller it won't go and if I stick it in the one that's right it will go so that's what I have to do uh, I'm gonna have to drill out that hole and stick a helicoil in the hole and then I'll be able to get the bolt back in and safely be able to go down the road with a decent set of brakes again well as you can see I've got had to pull the caliper again but I just wanted to show you the problem is here is of course wasn't much left a bit this is almost all the way through I see it's starting to break through on the other side so it looks like we're about home free oh yeah there we go All right, so this is the helicoil, and this little part here is actually the part that drives it in. You see there's a little, a little notch cut out of that top part there, so that's actually intended to break away once the helicoil is installed. But... All right, so the helicoil goes right on this tool, and you turn it until that lines up with that little notch. And then once it does, line it up with your hole here, start to get it to go. Now. I'm just going to turn that nice and slow until this helicoil is just below the surface. Just right at the surface now, just below and just barely sticking out on this side. All right, well, there's the back side of the helicoil right here and now you can either take a punch and put the punch through here and pop that this little piece off of here or you can just take a pair of needle nose pliers grab hold of it and pull it off it should be just fine either way i went ahead and got two new bolts that also have the thread lock already on the bolt and this is basically what it is so we'll be putting the caliper back on and tightening these up they should be just about done well i wanted to see what just what kind of condition the brake fluid is in um and that's in really actually pretty good condition um so I'm just going to fill that thing up and uh, bleed just a little bit out of the calipers to make sure there isn't any air in them and be replacing this with brake fluid. Now you have to be careful. It takes uh, this VW, uh, like foreign vehicle, takes different kinds of oil. So. Always check with your owner's manual for specific torque settings, and also fluid requirements. Uh, this VW Bug actually you'd think would take dot three brake fluid, but it doesn't, it takes dot four. I'm not a certified mechanic, never said that I was, but I'm pretty good with my hands and I know how to read. And if you are the same, then you're gonna have not too much difficulty making this happen. If you're needing to uh, get your brakes done and you find that one of the bolts is uh, at least one of the bolt holes is stripped out that uh, possibly you can go ahead and uh, and uh, get the right helicoil to fit your uh, project. 
First thing that I would do though is consult an expert, go to the actually the auto store that you that you trust and ask them what size of helicoil do I need for this size bolt and they'll be able to tell you. If uh, you don't want to tackle it, go ahead and have an expert take care of it. But uh, if you're like me and pretty good with your hands and can read and understand things, how to do it, and you have the tools necessary, why not give it a shot? All you got to lose is maybe the part, and you can always change out the part. On a side note, I had a light go out, a brake light go out, and so I went ahead and, and uh, pulled this panel, which is right in the side here. I don't know if you can see it, but it's right, right in here where my finger is. Pulled this panel, and there's like a uh, little, little uh, not really a wing nut, but a uh, turn knob that you unturn and after you get that all the way off you can pull this light directly out and anyway I was successful obviously in, in uh, changing out the bulb that was burnt but I, I decided to try to put an LED light in where the turn signal is because it's it's not like the brake light well LEDs don't work in this apparently because the polarity is different I'd have to cut the wires and switch them around to get the polarity right so I just didn't want to have to go through that trouble so I just installed the bulbs that came with it and that's just an FYI hey thanks for tuning in this is Dave Anderson the Heli Cools Helipad I really appreciate you I'm signing out make sure to check out my other videos I've got over 130 other videos of all kinds of stuff that's really cool to watch it'll keep you entertained for a good long time till next time be safe and God bless